Tudor theme park to solve your medical mysteries. Chris is preparing the Ouchmobile for his first patient. And Zand is out in the park to answer your burning questions. That's amazing! Next patient, please. Hello, Dr Chris. First in is 12-year-old Arthur, who wants his scalp seen. So, Arthur, what has brought you to the Ouchmobile today? I have some dry, flaky patches of skin on my scalp and over my body. What's the diagnosis, Doc? So this sounds like a classic case. If I have some dry, flaky patches of skin around my scalp and all over my body, itis. Couldn't have put it better myself. OK, Arthur, do you want to open up the eyelid? Now, lean forward. So you've got this flaky skin there, and then you can see some of the flakes of skin are actually in your hair. So Arthur's got this really common condition called psoriasis. And psoriasis is where your body makes too many skin cells at particular points, which is why they start flaking off. How do psoriasis come about? So it's a little bit genetic, so you get it a bit from your mum and dad. Yes. But it's partly to do with your body having an increased amount of inflammation at those sites, so you get too many skin cells, which is why you have to brush them off and moisturise them. OK. Arthur, thank you very much for bringing in your psoriasis to see me. I'm out and about. Let's see if anyone's got any questions for me. Why is the Veruca so infectious? Verrucas are designed to be infectious. That's right, Zand. Viruses want to spread and take over the world. They get on your feet and then they kill the cells in your feet and get them to spread little bits of virus all over the floor and then other people pick them up on their feet. They ride around in swimming pools, changing room floors, things like that. So if you've got a Veruca, cover your foot when you go to the swimming pool and if you haven't got a Veruca, then make sure you don't get one by keeping your feet clean. Chris is back at the Ouchmobile. Next patient, please. And next into the clinic is nine-year-old Jessica. So, Jessica, what brings you to the Ouchmobile today? Well, my joints are very floppy and I've got pseudochondroplasia. What's the diagnosis, Doc? This sounds like a classic case of my joints are really floppy and I've got pseudoachondroplasia-itis. Well, easy for you to say. So, let's have a look. Do you want to open the eye? I'll give you a hand. So, can you show us on the Ouch cam your floppy joints? <laughs> oh, wow. OK, yeah, so they're very floppy, aren't they? I can bend my hand back to my wrist. Back. Wow! <laughs> so you said you've got this thing called pseudoachondroplasia. So can you show us what are the other things that, that go with that? Um, I'm shorter than all my friends. In fact, if I stand next to you, <laughs> that will be very obvious, <laughs> won't it? Because you're about half my height. And, you, and, and most nine-year-olds would be taller, wouldn't they? Yeah. OK. So pseudoachondroplasia is a, is a medical condition that makes you short because your bones don't grow properly. And that's because there's a problem with one of the genes for this protein called collagen. Collagen's in your joints and it makes your ears, it makes all the soft, gristly bits of your body. What makes my joints, like, bend back really far? I think it's because the way the collagen is produced actually kills some of the bone cells while they would normally be growing. So all of that makes your joints more flexible. Is there anything cool about having pseudoachondroplasia? Well, when I was younger, me and my friends liked to play hide and seek, so I could always hide in smaller places. So you can win any game of hide and seek, because yeah. you can get into the smallest place? Yeah. OK, so Jessica, thank you very much for coming in with your pseudoachondroplasia. Thank you very much, Dr Chris. That is a real pleasure. Job done for today. Clinic closed. You can't beat a nice long walk in the countryside. And here in Northumberland National Park, there is plenty of space to explore. <laughs> but among all this beauty is some really tough terrain. The Northumberland Mountain Rescue Team look after an area stretching 5,000 square kilometres. That's roughly the same size as 934,367 football pitches. I'm joining them today on a training exercise as they test out a new piece of equipment for locating people who are lost on the moors. A drone. Are you excited about the training exercise? <laughs> Great, well, let's go! Pretending to be walkers are Jenny and Morag. They set out on the moor earlier. The weather isn't great, which is a common thing, and now they're lost. Heading up the team for this exercise is instant controller Pete Roberts. 
how are we approaching this? Well, it's time critical. We need to get out there fast. It's an awful day, bad weather, it's cool, cold. So we've got to the location where the team want to start looking for Jenny and Morag, and they're going to get their gear out and get going. So with ground patrol deployed, it's now time for takeoff. So you get a really good idea of how quickly it is getting a view of terrain. You're quickly covering a lot of ground. The ground searchers just physically can't run across yeah. the land. What's amazing is that this drone allows the mountain rescue team to search an area up to four times faster than on foot. And with conditions such as hypothermia, it is really important that medical help gets to the casualty as quickly as possible. Hey guys, I think I've got something. OK, let's have a look. So what you can see on the monitor is Jenny and Morag. They're down by a river. So that is very good news, isn't that it, That is very good news indeed. If we get the ground team in, we can make a full assessment. We have located Jenny and Morag. They're by the bridge next to the stream. Over. It is getting cold, and um, I can't stop thinking about how cold it would have been if I'd been here for any amount of time. Hello. How are you doing? My name's Carl. I'm from the rescue team. We're here to help you, OK? Within a few minutes, the ground team have arrived and checked the casualties for signs of hypothermia and other medical emergencies. And if you do get lost, Pete, what's the advice? You call 999 and ask for mountain rescue. Just stay where you are. Even in the poor conditions on the moor, drones like this are being used to help save lives. And it's not just in search and rescue. In the future, medical drones may be able to fly vital life-saving equipment or even donated blood directly to the patient. Well, I think we should say thank you to the drone. Thanks, Drony!